why you clicked this video. You want to find out more about what the field application scientist and or specialist role involves. And I'm going to tell you that today. So I am sitting in a hotel room, literally, okay, in Belgium. In Belgium, okay? Now, I live in the United States. I am here in Belgium for work. This is where my company sent me to work, okay? So I went on like a tourist tour and um, I literally just got really humbled and it inspired me to really just think about you you who are a PhD as well and are looking for that ideal role or looking to grow within this role as a field application scientist or specialist. Um, and I said, you know what? I'm going to go back to my room and I'm going to do a video. I'm not going to have anything fancy, pretty behind me. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to give the, the most passionate and most forthcoming information that I can possibly deliver to you today. So stick with me during this video and I am going to tell you what it is that a field application scientist and or specialist, I'll use interchangeably, does. All right, the magic question. What is a field application scientist? So just to note, sometimes field application scientists are called field application specialists. When I first started my career in this field, I was actually called a field application specialist. But now I'm termed a field application scientist. And in one of the future videos, I'll explain to you what could be or what may be the difference. But overall, generally, they are the same or very similar when you have a PhD. So what is a field application scientist? Well, a field application scientist is someone who is responsible for training, um, teaching, and or supporting a process, a platform, or a product. And who are you training or teaching or supporting? You're teaching uh, researchers or healthcare professionals. Now, it really depends on if you're in scientific affairs or medical affairs. If you're in scientific affairs, more than likely you'll be training researchers. I specifically myself was training cancer researchers at the time. I'm now currently in medical affairs. And so my role is to train clinicians, physicians, people who are practicing medicine. Now, once you train these researchers and or healthcare professionals, you are now the person who will support them fully, okay? Um, you do a little support beforehand, but you'll support them fully with that product process or platform. And they will look to you as their expert. Not only will they look to you as an expert, but the company will look to you as the expert of that product process or platform. If you get the gist here, there are three Ps product, platform, and process. Now, other um, field application scientists or specialists may term um, these differently or may give some more explanation or another way of identifying what uh, we do, but in those three Ps literally cover the gist of what uh, we would train on or teach. All right, so you are the expert. You are the expert externally and you are the expert internally. Expert does sound like a lot of pressure, and sometimes it can be. Well, internally, your responsibility would be to train um, other departments that are have may have customer-facing roles or client-facing roles um, in regards to that process, that platform, or that product, because you're the person who knows how to use it, why it's used, when it's used, how much is used, you are the person who's gonna help your company, whether it's the research and development department, whether it is the sales department, whether it is the service engineering department, you will, or whether it is your leadership team, you're going to bring that information back to the professionals at your company. That information is super valuable because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that after something is actually, um, uh, the physicians or the researchers have something, whether it's that product or that platform, um, or know how to do a process that you train them on, they wanna know if it's being used. Why? Because one day the sales team wants to go in one day and literally probably use that information to sell more or to scale back, the research and development department may want to say, hey, well, let's redesign, let's improve the design. Um, so there's so many different ways that the information that you bring back 
after you train and while you're supporting and while you're finding out this information for those who you already um, have trained, it can be used in so many uh, different cross-functional ways within your company. That information is honestly gold. So not only are you developing a curriculum or implementing a curriculum, but you will also more than likely be responsible for creating and updating the user guides or manuals that the researchers and or physicians will use to support their use in that product platform or process. And so one of the biggest things you'll be doing is probably writing a lot of uh, tutorials uh, a lot of manuals, a lot of user guides, a lot of protocols. And if you're a PhD, you're definitely familiar with the protocol um, of how to read one and how to use one. But this time, you'll be the one writing one. And then there's the assessment process. This assessment process is formally known as validation. Well, the validation process is not something that all field application scientists are responsible for, but more often than not, it's becoming something that is a responsibility of field application scientists. And what you're doing is you're assessing, you're going through a whole process where you work very closely with the research and development pro uh, department to make sure that that product, that process, or that platform is being used effectively, is functioning correctly, and more than likely is free of nuances, 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 okay? Because that would be a problem. Um, it is a problem. A lot of times if you have processes that are um, not fully um, useful in a clinic, you can imagine the frustration that can happen um, from physicians who are literally trying to treat their patients. So it's very important that field application scientists are the people that assess these processes before they even go out and train, okay? And even during the time of them training others, you still wanna make sure there's some type of active validation process going on where you're assessing the workflow and you're assessing the use or the functionality. So. Overall, guys, you are like a liaison as a field application scientist. Why? Because if you kind of sum up a lot of the different tasks that I talked about, you are literally providing answers and information to people internally, the research and development team in your company, the sales team, the service engineering team, the marketing team, and the leadership team. You are also, of course, the person that connects the outside clientele, your researchers and your physicians, to literally the company, right? You are that middle woman or man. And so your role is very significant. Um, I find this particular job to be very fulfilling and enjoyable. Now, the question is, who can be a field application scientist or specialist? What degrees are required? What experience is required? Well, let's start with degrees. It is not a requirement to have an advanced degree. You do not have to have a PhD. But what has happened in the field is that more PhDs are applying for positions like this. So companies are getting a little bit more, maybe confident that they can fulfill these roles with PhDs. And so what they're doing is they're looking mainly for PhDs to fulfill these roles. Now, why is that? More than likely, it's because the people that are being trained, the researchers and or physicians, have advanced degrees themselves. They have doctorates. So why not have to hire doctorates to go and train and teach and support other doctors? It just makes sense. And so even though you can get this role without having this degree, you more than likely, it's becoming more challenging to attain a role like this, especially in medical affairs, if you do not have a doctorate degree. And then there's salary. Uh, what do field application scientists or specialists make? Well, I would love to tell you my salary, but um, I don't think I am today. However, I will tell you that field application scientists can make very healthy and pleasing salaries depending on the uh, field you're in, whether you're in scientific affairs and or medical affairs, of course medical affairs is going to pay a lot more simply because you are uh, training and supporting those who are taking care of patients and um, 
in the scientific affairs, you can still find some healthy and pleasing or satisfying salaries. Um, and usually it's going to start out, I would say, more than likely at your low six figures. It can start out even as low as, I would say, um, maybe seventy to eighty thousand dollars. Now, it's not a bad salary to possibly get started, simply because it's higher than a postdoc, much higher than a postdoctoral position. But second, because there's a saying that says, "Once you're in, you're in." And that is referring to industry. When you're in, you're in. Sometimes you just need to get in. When you get in, I guarantee you that more than likely, sometimes you're, after your first roll, your salary may literally double, depending on the company that you may get offered an opportunity. And I can assure you that can happen. So some last few tidbits in regards to a field application scientist role um, is to know that this position usually allows you to work remotely, which means you can work from home. Now my first position, I worked from home as well as in the office, but I did start out full time in the office, then got the chance to vary between both the home and the office. But more than anything, I traveled. So you can end up with a position where you are working from home as well as the office as well as traveling um, currently i work from home and i travel so predominantly you will be spending a lot of your days from the comfort of your own home but when you go out you are out and sometimes you can spend several days uh, maybe the whole week at a particular uh, hospital and or laboratory really assisting in training that need training well, I hope today that this video brought you more clarifying information in regards to what a field application scientist does. And I hope that more than anything, it is something that you can use from this day forth, this particular channel, to find out more about the role, whether you're going to explore it and apply, whether you've already applied, um, and whether you already have the role and how you want to grow within it. So I've been pretty successful within uh, my role as a field application scientist and specialist. So I'm going to bring you a lot more videos in regards to whether it deals with interviewing, whether it deals with being organized, the best ways to train, the best ways to actually implement things within your company, to develop curriculums, to collaborate, to communicate, like so much is involved in this role. So many good things, even the travels and the perks and the places. Um, I'm going to bring you all that information and I hope you stick with me. I hope you subscribe to this channel. I hope you give this video a thumbs up and more importantly, make sure you share this. There are other PhDs just like you who are literally looking um, into roles within industry and honestly, this may be a good role. So please make sure you share it and I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.